Hey team, welcome back to the Math Olympia Challenge. Today, we're going to be focusing on problem number five. So get ready to put your math skills to the ultimate test and make sure to hit that like button where you can subscribe and let's begin with this mathematical journey together. So problem five. An n set is a set of different positive integers, including a given positive integer n. So let mn be the smallest possible mean of any n set. For how many values of n less than 2021 is mn an integer? So this is a question about means. So before we start to look at n sets, let's observe some fundamental characteristics of the sets of these integers. And we'll start with a simple example here. So let's take a look at a set of integers, three, five, seven, nine. And I've chosen them as the mean is an integer within itself. You can see the mean is six. But if we were to simply go ahead and add a six to the set, it wouldn't change the mean at all. But if I added something bigger than a six, then the mean would have gone up. But if we picked something smaller, then the mean would have gone down. And we can play the same game by removing numbers. So if I take this 6 away and remove it from the set, then that doesn't change the mean of the set. But if I were to remove a number smaller than the mean, so let's say a 3 for example, then the mean of the set will go up. And if I had removed something bigger than the mean, then the mean would go down. So these are all useful things to remember later in the problem. And another thing is, if I swapped a number and let's say replace this with a four, then that would make the mean go down. So it can make the mean smaller by swapping any of these for smaller numbers. And these are some of the things that we'll be using when we're exploring the n sets. So let's apply it to the n set. And we know that this n set should have an n. Now we just said that if we could swap any of these integers for smaller integers, then we'd be able to reduce the mean. So if our n set has a minimal mean, that means that it must be n followed by a string of consecutive integers starting at one. So something like what I've just drawn here. And if we consider what happens when we add those in, if we start with the set just containing n, then I add in one, what will happen to the mean? Well, the mean will be n plus one over two. And as I add in extra numbers, the number that I add is smaller than the existing mean, what will happen? Well, it will pull the mean down. But later on, if I add in extra numbers and they are bigger than the existing mean, then it will pull the mean back up. So we're gonna consider the point at which the minimum is first hit. So let's say we have a set like k minus one, where the mean is not minimal. But when we go ahead and take another set as one, two, three, going up to k, we hit the minimal mean the first time. And because we're looking for this situation in the question, let's say the mean is also an integer. And I'm going to go call this u. So this set has mean mu. And if I remove k, the mean will go up. And what does that mean? Well, that means that mu must be greater than k. However, if I add the next number in after k, which is going to be k plus 1, this is the minimal mean. So the mean cannot get any smaller. So then we know that the mean is at least as big. And this means that the mean has to be less than or equal to k plus 1. And if we're looking at the situation where the mean is an integer, what does that leave us with? Well, it leaves us with one possibility, which therefore means that mu equals to k plus 1, and that's your mean. So we now know what the n set of the minimum mean is. And what's more is that we know what the mean will be. So what can we do? We can go ahead and take this set as 1, 2, all the way up to k, and we'll know that this will give us k plus 1. And what will this tell us about n? Well, it'll tell us that we'll have all of these sum of consecutive integers, which will put us in a position where we can have n and k and k plus 1, and then divide this by 2 to get us k plus 1 squared. 
and then we can rearrange this to look at n. So that means we'd have n equaling to k plus 1 squared minus k. Again, that is over 2, and that ends up with k plus 1 times k plus 2 over 2. Well, look at this. You can see that n is a triangular number. So we started with an n set, which was the minimal mean, and we end up with n being a triangle number. And what's more is that this whole argument is reversible. So we're now looking to count how many triangle numbers we have. And what we have to be careful about is when n is 1, because that isn't covered in this particular case. But when n is 1, then 1 is a triangle number. And the mean of the set that just contains 1 is 1, which is definitely minimal and an integer, so we're fine, which means 1 does work. But what we have left to do here is to count how many triangular numbers we have. So the last thing that we need to do is look for n. And we know that these are triangular numbers. And we know that we need these to be less than 2021. And what that means is that n times n plus 1 has to be less than 4042. So it's just a case of finding what values will work. So let's say we have 64 squared. We know that equals to 4096. And we know that because it's a power of 2. And again, if we go for 63 times 64, that is equal to 4032. And that's fine because we're under 4042. So we're going to take n as n times n plus 1 over 2 for all values of n between 1 and 63. And that gives us a total of 63 possibilities. And there we are. Marvellous. So I hope that question was clear. And I hope you can see how I've taken a specific approach to see where the mean is not minimal, to then when it is minimal, and then finding those values with the triangular number. We hope you enjoyed the brain teasing question and had a great time exploring the world of advanced mathematics. So don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you found it fascinating and make sure to subscribe to our channel for more exciting Olympiad problems. Keep pushing the boundaries of your mathematical knowledge and we'll see you in the next video.